don't fear them to where you do things that go against them. Every believer who intends to make it to heaven, Christian, who confesses Jesus Christ as the Son of God, absolutely, they need deliverance. Jesus told his disciples and all of us throughout the New Testament, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Lay hands on the sick, watch them recover, prophesy, and he said, cast out demons. Why would he emphasize that? And why would he show it throughout his ministry? Even Paul, when he turned around and told the woman, get out. He told the spirit in the woman to get out. She had been following him around saying, man of the most high God, the most high God, calling him by his name. And she approached him and he let her have it. And he rebuked the demon out of it. She was a brand new person. God allowed these specific stories, true stories, to be in the Word of God for a reason, for a purpose. He wants all of us to be able to recognize the fact that we can know God in our head, but we have to know Him in our heart. And then once we understand Him in our heart, we won't want to do the things that we used to do before. We won't want to speak the way we spoke before and sing the songs that we used to sing before, watch the videos and the movies and the, and the programs that we used to watch before. He will change. Behold, He makes all things new, the book of Revelation says. So every believer that, thank God, they come out of the world and they, they realize that perhaps I need to change a little bit perhaps I need a little God in my life my children need to understand God and the world's in a little chaos and so perhaps this Bible stuff is something to take a second look at or a third look at or grandma used to do it or grandpa told me for whatever reason maybe a trial a tribulation which happens to a lot of people causes them to come to the Lord God will use whatever it takes to get people to heaven he's not concerned about how big their house is. He's not concerned about how big their bank account is or how many uh, um, successful stories they have in life. Those are benefits that go with it, but the base is the matter of the heart. And when we have Jesus in our heart, we are going to want deliverance. We were all born in sin. So whether we like it or not, we all need deliverance. If the church or the place that they are going to or let's say the people don't even go to church and they just have their their function at home or television they need to have a form of what Jesus spoke of they need to have healing they need to have prophecy they need to have their demons cast out of their back their life their house their finances their future their favor their family all of it they need every bit that God said not one left out Jesus focused on that and he even went and the, approached the man that came out of the graveyard saying that, uh, you know, he, he saying, Son of God, what do you have to do with me? And then Jesus asked him, Jesus knew who he was, what is your name? And the man said, Legion, for we are many. And then he begged, the demons knew, this Son of God has the power to keep me back to where I belong. Send me into the pigs. And so Jesus was merciful enough to send the demons into the pigs, but then the pigs, of course, went in and drowned in the river, so, so they ended up going to hell anyway. But, um, you know, that the, the demons want to overtake a person's life. Um, they, they, they attach themselves to objects. They attach themselves to animals. They attach themselves to humans. But they have the most productive um, 
uh, damage, if you will, a human being. So this is why the Bible says we fight not against flesh and blood, Ephesians chapter 6. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness. This uh, teaching and this focus that our ministry has on deliverance is not to give attention to the devil. It's to get him out. It's to let the people know, here is the purpose behind your problem. Here is the root of your problem. Now cast that demon out of there. Call him by name, just like Jesus did, and get him out. If you don't know who they are, you can't call them by name. Sure, you can say every foul spirit, but then you need to be consistent. Every foul spirit, every foul spirit, every foul spirit, every day. Get out! Get out! Get out of my life! Get out of my future, my finances, my family. That is how it works, and then you replace that with the power, the presence, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. Deliverance is a must. It is a must. It is not something that you can skip over because it's too radical or it's too uh, way out there <laughs> or it's, it's just overboard or it's just not for me or it's not my style. All of those excuses will land hell's fire at your feet all the way to your head the day you die. These people must be set free. Set free through deliverance. Deliverance through the blood of Jesus, the Word of God, the name of Jesus, the fire of the Holy Ghost, and the whole armor of God. The grace package, I call it. The grace package. We are saved by grace. His mercy endures every day. We beg for His mercy. We ask for His mercy. We rely on His mercy. We need His mercy. His grace ooh, is in so many colorful, it's, it's, it's arrayed in so many colorful uh, uh, attributes, if you will. And grace is not the vehicle to sin. Grace is not the vehicle to say, hmm, I think... Um, I, I, I think I can get away with this or I can do this because grace covers me and no one understands the real meaning of grace. I've heard all of that. Not true. The book of Philippians, the book of Ephesians, the book of Gal Galatians explains it in a different way. Grace is the vehicle for repentance. Grace is the vehicle for repentance. Grace is the vehicle for repentance. There is two sides to the gospel the hand of the lamb and the hand of the lion so grace is the hand of the lamb the hand of the lion is deliverance they must go together they must go together to be balanced or we would be off course amen we all need grace and mercy every day love on our enemies love on those people be kind to people go out of our way for people be selfless not selfish selfless and then deliver them and self-deliverance they, they can simply just take the word of God go into a private closet prayer room wherever they are and cast those demons off their back out of their life out of their children's life call them by name and replace them with the power the presence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God it is very necessary it's a part of salvation it's all of it everything Jesus said it's a package deal and if you lay a simple part aside, you're offending God. Don't offend Him. Grab a hold of everything that He's given you. It's for a reason. Have Him open your eyes for discernment. And you'll see, ah, I needed this and I didn't even know. You'll turn to your neighbor and say, um, um, you know, I used to do that. I used to say that, but I don't anymore. You'll turn to the neighbor and you'll say, you know, I... Um, once I had deliverance, once I prayed over myself that every foul spirit leave my body, whether it be the Jezebel spirit, which is the controlling man and female alike, a lot of leaders have Jezebel spirits. And like this, like the precious King Hezekiah, who I love that story so much, we don't want that pride to take over us and, and let the wealth and the fame um, um, override the grace and the mercy of God. So in that case, we, we must grab a hold of the Word of God and self-deliver it. Cast every Jezebel spirit, cast every, every spirit of jealousy, of antichrist, of, of uh, lust, and every uh, whoredom and perversion and bondage, familiar spirit, 
I could go on and on. There's 12 strong men, and the 13th is, of course, the Jezebel spirit. These, the spirit of fear. Oh, all of these spirits, they are being used together. They're linked together. And these sweet Christians, they're just now coming into Christianity as they realize that they were born in sin. They need to shed that sin off of them. And they grow and they realize, wow, look at the enemy that's in front of me. And they realize, hmm, all I have to do is pick up the word of God, the whole armor of God. I put on my spirit man. I dress my spirit man with the whole armor of God. And all of a sudden, the enemy that seems so big shrinks right down to nothing. And we realize then that we have more power in our pinky and in the power of our tongue through the blood of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ, the whole armor of God and the fire of the Holy Ghost, than that demon has in its entire entity, in its entire being. It's ugly, it's nasty, it's like a spider. Get rid of it. It's like a, it's like a snake that doesn't need to be around. Get rid of it. Just get rid of it. Uh, our spirit...